I was so proud that my new Sony camera was on the cutting edge of technology, being able to do 4K 120p. But then I watched Simon from Ordinary Filmmaker, and he made me realize that 4K is redundant. Canon just filed a proprietary 16K trademark. Not being a Canon shooter, I thought 4K was a height of resolution for mirrorless cameras. Doing my research on YouTube, I discovered that Canon can already do 8K. I have to admit, I'm a little behind the times when it comes to the latest technology. Just a few years ago, I thought HD was the most beautiful picture ever invented. We are living in privileged times. And to, to really appreciate that, you have to understand how television itself has changed. We've gone from a black and white four by three aspect ratio to this beautiful high definition 16 by nine ratio that the public is absolutely gonna fall in love with as soon as they get a chance to see it. Yes, ma'am, I do. Now when 4K became available to film on mirrorless cameras, I admit I was slow to adopt it. Tony Northrup said if you stick to HD, you could save on your file sizes. And since my computer was eight years old, I needed all the help I could get. It's like 4K is one of these things that everybody talks about and nobody really cares about. I really learned this for the first time when we were traveling on a press trip, probably to review some camera, and we needed to send the files via my cell phone back to Justin so he could edit everything. And I was concerned about the bandwidth. The 4K files would have been too big. So uh, I filmed everything in HD. I sent the files back to Justin and he said he was actually able to edit them much quicker because the file sizes were smaller and his computer had an easier time crunching them. And then he sent them back to me and I did some more editing and even on my little travel laptop, I was able to get the HD editing done whereas I know it would have choked on 4K files. And then we published the video and I cringed like, oh, this video is gonna get so many dislikes because it's not 4K. Nobody cared. No, not a single person mentioned it. No, nothing. But then Vu convinced me that Tony was wrong. 4K was actually the way to go. Tony Northrup, 1.37 million subscribers, Tony Northrup, posted a video regarding how 4K failed, how, you know, posting things on YouTube with HD 1080p is fine, which I don't necessarily disagree with. You know, if you're a YouTube content creator, Posting things in 1080p is fine because most people probably view their content on their cell phone and a lot of cell phones only have 1080p. I don't necessarily disagree with him that he says 1080p is just fine, you don't need 4K, but if you have the capability of shooting 4K, you should do so anyway, just as I'm doing now with my Sony Alpha 6600. It is crisp, it has great dynamic range, it's very gradable, especially if you shoot HLG3, which is what I'm doing now, and it's a manageable size, 100 megabytes per second. You don't have to take up too much file space. It's easy to edit. And of course, it is sharp. You could crop in and out, what have you. If I filmed in 4K, I'd have plenty of resolution to reframe my squirrel films into vertical TikToks. When I was finally able to upgrade my computer and get my hands on a used Sony A7S III, I was excited to finally be able to see my squirrels in all their 4K glory. When I played back the video clips, I did notice an increase in detail. Unfortunately, the Sony A7S III doesn't have animal eye detecting video, so many times the squirrel's eye was out of focus. And once I uploaded my videos to YouTube and watched them back on my smartphone, I have to be honest, I didn't notice a huge difference in quality. But since I am visually impaired, I decided that other people would probably notice the quality. And besides, I did have a few viewers comment that I should really be uploading in 4K. And then I started to wonder if 4K was so good for reframing and cropping, what could 8K do? I watched this video from Gordon Lang and the possibilities seemed endless. But of course, the benefit to filming in 8K is the ability to zoom in by up to two times without any loss of detail in a 4K project. This gives you greater flexibility in post. But I decided not to get ahead of myself. Plus, I didn't want to switch camera brands to get 8K. And then I made the decision that if I was going to film the squirrels in 4K, maybe I should try to film myself in 4K. I had no idea that 4K could showcase the imperfections in a human's face so accurately. But then I learned all about black mist filters. It can soften up the image and make your face look so much better. So next to me is a man with no confidence. 
He needs a filter to protect himself from your gaze, and he's desperate. He's desperate for your approval, and he needs a filter. He has the Black Pro Mist filter on right now. He's uglier than I am. You can sense my confidence, and that's what women love. And what has he got? Mosquitoes in his pocket? He saves mosquitoes for snacks? Like, come on. Besides the issue of showing facial imperfections, I've also learned that some filmmakers find the sharpness of 4K to be a problem. Many of them prefer a softer, more filmic look. I had no idea. I always thought the sharper the better. And then I learned that there's an alternative to using black mist filters to get that soft filmic look. Dear 1080p, the future just called. He has a message for you. He said to tell you that you're welcome here anytime. In fact, you're the only person who ever cleaned up after themselves without leaving a 4K mess. From watching this video from Henry Media Group, I learned that some filmmakers actually prefer HD. The first reason why I prefer filming in 1080p on the Sony a7 IV is the image quality, especially the sharpness. I think most modern day cameras are too sharp in terms of resolutions. I personally don't like the super sharp and super clean 3D pop when I'm watching a video, especially movies. They look too real to the point that they are too video-like videos, if that makes sense. That is also why I don't buy Blu-ray DVDs and I don't leave my TV at its default settings because they make the movie look more like a TV commercial with all the motion blur compensations, the 3D in-your-face kind of pop, and the colors that are usually too saturated. I'm starting to feel a bit conflicted because the more resolution you have, the more you can crop in on the squirrel's face and the more detail you can see. But HD definitely gives you more of an ethereal feel as if you've been able to leave reality behind, even just for a little while. Tony Northrup made an excellent point about why lower quality images might be a good thing in the age of AI. When AI is creating these slick polished videos, authenticity means everything, and maybe using HD as a way to set yourself apart. Another trend I think will be huge in 2026 is authenticity, like lo-fi stuff. In 2025, we saw tech like Nano Banana and ChatGPT generating very realistic images. But most of those images were based on professional images, like those pulled from stock databases. And thus, all the AI images that were produced looked a little too pro. I'm seeing a pushback from people where we want lower quality images because they seem more real, because high quality images now seem fake. And then I came across this video from Marcus Pix that made me realize that image quality might not be the most important thing in filmmaking. Special effects, gamma curves, megapixels, and dynamic range don't make a movie great. Storytelling does. You want to get noticed? Throw away the spec sheet and start listening to your heart. What triggers you? What makes you laugh? What makes you cry? That's what the world wants to see. They want to hear your heartbeat. The people out there are looking for a reason to live. They don't care what paintbrush you're using, but they want to see you paint something real, something from your heart, something that they can relate to, something that makes life worth living. And you can do that with a cheap camera from 20 years ago with no dynamic range. Good photography and filmmaking does not cost money, but it does require your very soul. I used to think 4K was critical to my squirrel cinematography, but I'm starting to realize that maybe storytelling and bringing a little bit of joy into people's lives is more important than resolution. If you like this video, give it a like. Consider subscribing for more camera-related content from a newbie like me. God bless.